late, but we are ready to go now. So we've got um, you joining us live from Talkie Girls Grammar School. Um, uh, and we also have you live from uh, on YouTube this morning. So um, we've got you both live on Talkie Girls Grammar School and on YouTube. And now if you're on YouTube, you can just leave your comments down below and I'll answer those. If you're at Talkie Girls Grammar School, you can leave your comments down the side there as we go as well today. And we're going to be making, uh, as it says on the board there, um, some fruity sweet curries. Um, and I'm going to be using this, the board over here where we'll just... Um, We'll just be talking about a bit more about it. We'll write up a bit more information as we're going along today. So, um, yeah, some nice fruity sweet curries. It sounds like an odd one, um, but go with it. This does taste amazing. It's a recipe I put together when I was doing some work for Love, Ho Food, Hate, Waste. And we're going to be talking about how this is a great way to be using up um, waste or foods um, that you might be considering as waste and throwing away. And we don't want to be doing that. We want to be uh, using up as much resources as we can and not throwing those away. Um, and especially so with lockdown number three, we want to be making the best use of what we've got around us. So um, it's a brilliant recipe for that. Um, it's uh, using up, uh, it's all about food commodities as well today so we'll be talking about that now the recipe will all be on the board here you've got the recipes as well whether it's through social media or through school um, so you've got your recipe as well but i'm going to talk through it step by step up here as well so we can go through it and we'll go through um, all of the rules about playing it safe as well as we go along with this one so uh that's how we're doing right questions start to start with let's have a look um we on uh Talking Girls Grammar School, um, we have got a question already. Now, the questions uh, uh, from Talking Girls Grammar was, what chickpeas did we need? Uh, I only have the dried ones, but we soak them overnight. Will, will that work? And the answer is yes, yes, absolutely. So we'll go through all the ingredients. Um, I'm going to be using um, who else? my chickpeas. Mine's a, mine are canned chickpeas there, um, which is going to work really, really well. But if you haven't got uh, canned ones and got dried chickpeas and you soak those ones, that's also going to work really, really well for you. OK, so um, don't, don't worry about that one. Um, right, uh, looks like I've got thumbs up from Talkie Girls Grammar School. Um, any thumbs up from uh, YouTube to make sure you can hear me okay? Hopefully you can, um, and that's coming across well for you too. Uh, brilliant. Um, okay, and Talkie Girls Grammar School, if you uh, if you um, have any problems with uh, accessing that, you can obviously access it live on your know, YouTube as well. So uh, vice versa, we're simultaneously broadcasting uh, to other schools around the country, which is great, as well as being broadcasting from Talk Girls Grammar. So before we begin, um, really important before we begin, that we um, play it safe in the kitchen. So um, what's really important for me is that uh, you, if you're, cook, if you're a student, um, a child, um, uh, anyone who's cooking at home, please can you make sure that you have permission to cook at home, it's safe to cook at home, and you've got yourself a grown up somewhere along the line there to help you uh, if uh, need be. So you've got that that person around who can uh, help and assist because obviously I can't be there with you um, to 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 help you. So uh, we need another grown up around. So make sure you've got all that, all the normal um, uh, information about that, because um, kitchens can be inherently there can be dangers in there and you could cause injury. So please play it safe in the kitchen. Um, now, while we're talking about playing it safe in the kitchen, we need to prepare ourselves and we need to prepare our work areas before we start to begin. So that's really important as well. I'm going to talk you through that preparation together um, on the board here. So um, let's before we begin, let's talk about what we're, the learning objectives for today are. We're going to be demonstrating how to make a reduction in sauce, practicing knife skills and using the cooker and understanding chemical raising agents because we're going to make some flatbreads to go with our curries, which will be absolutely delicious and perfect for a cold wintry morning uh, like today so something warm to warm ourselves up with our curry so it's going to be uh, beautiful we can dip that in that'll be just beautiful to have there now for the keen eye of you there i'm using a package here called hodger education it's the, the package we use in school um, to be able to present uh, all of our powerpoints and present all of our online learning so that's, that's hodger education i'm using um thank you to them Right, um, so let's get ourselves prepared and get our work areas ready to go. And now to do that, we've got a nice little uh, set of uh, work, with a set of letters there to remind us about how we get ready. And that's Hattie. And Hattie is all about getting yourself ready, getting your area ready and getting all your equipment ready. And that's what we're going to look at. So what does Hattie stand for? Well, Hattie stands for, let me show you on the screen here again. Um, Hattie stands for um, H4 um, 
hands and hair. So the first one is hands and hair. So if you've got long hair, can you make sure your hair is tied back and uh, before you start to cook? I know that might seem a little bit weird at school to be tying your hair, sorry, at home. I know it might be more so school, but at home, yes, if you've got long hair, you don't want any of that hair in your food, that'd be disgusting. So let's make sure we've got a hair tied back or you could wear a hat either either. Um, I, I don't need to worry. I've not got very, much, very long hair myself, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Um, but I am, my hands, very, very important, especially so at the moment when this, uh, crazy situation we're in at the moment so really important you wash your hands all the time but also when you're cooking um there to remember that a is for apron so again it might seem a little bit strange you wearing an apron in the kitchen at home um when you work not normally do when you're preparing food but please 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 let's get an apron on nice clean apron ready to go before you start and then we'll wash that one down when you're finished today so get your apron on T, next T is for making sure your tabletop area, tabletop area is nice and clean, nice, uh, maybe an antibacterial spray or disinfectant sanitizer type spray. You can spray that down and make sure your area is nice and clean before we start to begin. Um, and then we've got another T, which is very useful to have a tray to carry all of your equipment and ingredients, keep it uh, together so that you're organized before we start to cook. Okay, so that I is for uh, um, ingredients and E is for equipment. And that is for we remember how we remember um, how to prepare our areas. And we use the word hatting. Um, now, that pre preparation of our area is called mise en place, mise en place, there, mise en place. Um, mise en place is, and that means a French word to put in place. So if you were um, preparing to cook, that's what you'd be doing, you're putting everything in place um, before we begin. Right, uh, let me just check any questions before we uh, we get going. Uh, so um, we have a few of you streaming online on YouTube and a few of you uh, at uh, Talking Girls Grammar. So any more questions here? Um, uh, my, I'm using uh, raw uh, chickpeas, um, which I soaked. That's fine. Yep, uh, that's good to go. So, like I say, we can we can use a variation on this one. But this curry is also really good because it gives you the opportunity to use up all sorts of other uh, vegetables, leftover vegetables, and fruits. Um, which might seem an odd combination: bananas, mandarins in a curry, a sweet curry. Trust me, though, go with it. Taste it, you'll love it. Um, lots of people say, oh, it's a bit of an odd one, but honestly, uh, people absolutely adore it. It's a really lovely one to have. Uh, okay, so so let's uh, let's let's begin. We need to get ourselves and our areas and everything else ready. So the first thing we need to do is that age. We need to wash our hands, tie our hair back, get ourselves ready. So um, I'm just gonna uh, move the camera around uh, to my kitchen so you can see my kitchen and we are going to go and wash my hands and ready to cook. Okay, so uh, let me go. I'm just gonna move mine around and hopefully you can see that there. Um, we're just going to zoom in there. Here we go. Uh, round to my kitchen there. So here's my kitchen, and I'm just going to come around and get myself ready as well. Um, so we need to get our hands washed and our um, hands washed and our aprons on before we start to begin. So let me just grab my aprons, ready to go. Okay, so that's my my apron ready to go um, and my phone has some chef whites on there as well but I need to make sure we've washed our hands as well so let's um, let's wash my hands I'm just going to bring that this other camera over actually if you're watching that one let's uh, let's let's come with me over here uh, obviously you can see me there as well so I'm just going to be doing that one to you all okay so um, we're going to be washing my hands in the sink here so I'm going to get some uh, soap some uh, nice soapy 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 um, I'm going to get that soap in my hands, I'm going to lather it up, I'm going to be doing my hands uh, like that on the inside of washing then my hands properly, properly, but then I'm going to do the back of my hands between my fingers, there we go, can you see that one, I'm just doing that one, hopefully you can see that one, just going to be going through, doing the back of my hands there, okay, and then I'm going to do my thumbs, make sure it's all properly wash, 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 don't forget your wrists, there we go, and then you want some hot soapy water, and we're just going to rub our hands together. There we go. Rub, 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 rub. I'm going to do the back of my hands, back of my hands. I'm going to do my thumbs again. Now, you all know now how long to wash your hands for. During the last 12 months, it's been told to you again and again and again how long you should be washing your hands for. But it is 20 seconds, okay? And again, how to remember that. You've been told that again and again over the last um, couple of months. It has been, if you have to do happy birthday twice, it's a great way to remember how to uh, wash your hands for the correct length of time. I'm just gonna roll my sleeves up as well. Um, dry my hands, wash, roll my sleeves up. And I tell you what, 
because I want to be really, really cautious today, I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also uh, use some hand gel on there as well. There we go. I'm going to use some hand gel. I'm just going to make sure we're properly some uh, antibacterial hand gel, make sure I'm properly cleaned up, ready to go before we start. All right, um, let's take my aprons and my chef weights and we're going to go back uh, and we're going to get back to the, my work area and we're going to start to get going. All righty, here we go, everybody, and back to me. Uh, okay, so um, we're gonna get our aprons on. I'm gonna actually wear my uh, chef whites and my aprons. Here we are, um, just got those ones from the laundry. There we go. So I'm gonna just get mine on. I'm using my Food Teacher Center, which is the association forum of all the food teachers up and down the country. Let's get this one on, and I'm gonna then put my apron on as well. So I'm gonna double myself up here about getting ready and uh, getting all of myself covered so that I'm ready to cook. And then we'll go through all the equipment and ingredients with you so that you um, can get everything in place to begin. So we'll talk about what ingredients you'll need. And also we'll talk about ingredients alternatives because some of you might have some allergies or intolerances to foods and you might need uh, to get some alternatives. So I'll talk to you through about different alternatives and other things you might be able to use instead because obviously we're in lockdown larder situations here. So um, because we're in lockdown larder situations, it might mean that uh, we can't get hold of all the ingredients required for all of some of our cooking. So we'll look at what you can do instead. So let me get my apron on as well. Okay, I think we're nearly ready to go. Well done, everybody. Um, hopefully you are nearly ready to go as well. Um, uh, good, good. So while you're getting yourself prepared, I'm now going to uh, get on the screen here um, everything that you're going to need. So I'm just going to talk you through the ingredients and the equipment that you're going to need to uh, get going today. Okay, so let's do that one with you. And, and the first one we're going to do, let's go back, actually, let's do, um, let's do, yeah, let's do ingredients and equipment. So ingredients. Um, the first ingredients I've got up there is an onion. So I've got myself um, an onion there. Um, now, you can uh, use a, a, a fresh onion like this one, or um, you could also use, um, let's think, we could, what else could we use? We could use some frozen onions. If you've got that, that would work fine. I'm happy for you to, to, to use those, and that would work well into it. So we're going to use, say, what we can get hold of in a lockdown larder situation. So, so don't worry about that. Um, what other things? I've got garlic. So I've got some, some garlic, same family as the onion. So I've got some, so we have garlic and onion there. Um, again, if you are having issues getting hold of those, if you can't get hold of any, um, you can use some garlic paste, which will work fine in this one as well. Just going to make sure we get that. Uh, there we go. Um, that would work well as well. Um, what other things do we got? So um, chickpeas. Now we've had a few questions there about whether you want to use dried chickpeas that have been soaked, which is absolutely fine. I'm using some tin chickpeas today. There we are, tin chickpeas, um, which is fine. I'm going to go with that one. Um, any particular brand, doesn't matter which brand you use there. Um, so some chickpeas there to go into our banana and chickpea. Now to go obviously with that, you need a banana. Now, um, the darker actually the better for this situation because the darker ones, the more mature uh, one, um, we've got some browning going on there. Ooh. Um, we talk about this as GCSE. We talk, talk about um, a type of browning this is. We talk about enzymic and non-enzymic browning. Um, this is an enzymic browning we've got going on there. It's like, almost like it's gone rusty and it ha has all, uh, um, been working uh, with the air to, to get this one. Anyway, um, so a banana. Darker, the better. Okay, sweeter for this one. So, so you can use um, any old bananas in there. Mandarins. So um, you could use a small tin of, of, of mandarins there. I've got a small tin there of mandarins. But if you can't get hold of mandarins, like I say, this is a great way to be using up uh, leftover vegetables and fruit. So here we go. I mean, I've just got some, some, some old uh, like satsumas, peelers, those sort of things. They're going to work really, really well in this one. Now, um, I know uh, we've had a comments come in to me saying, but uh, parents, are, they can't have oranges. So what can we do there? Um, it's a, an allergy one. So again, so allergies and tolerances, let's work with these ones. 
Um, so you could use any kind of uh, soft fruit on this one. So let's think of things like a mango would work really nicely with this one. Peaches would work nicely. So even pineapples, if you wanted to, would work really well with this one. So you work with what you've got on this one, and we will we we can we can use this up. It's a great way of being able to use so use use up leftovers that you might have around the house, um, so that we don't end up um, adding to the food waste. There, we actually put it in some foods that you can eat. Uh, let's have a look at the next one. Tomatoes, some chopped tomatoes. So there we go. We've got some chopped tomatoes there. Um, we're going to be putting it into this one. These are quite good as well. I'm also using sort of lockdown larder essentials that you might have in the cupboard here. So, um, but if you can't get hold of chopped tomatoes, and I know that's been that was certainly something in the first lockdown and the second one not so much, but um, they were a little bit rationed in the second lockdown. If you can't get hold of tomatoes, you can always chop up fresh tomatoes, which is fine. Um, um, you could use some passata if you wanted to to, uh, to go into this one. That that would also work. One of the cooked up, um, chopped up already tomato, um, but then uh, blend it. So you can use those in this one as well. So it all will work. Then we've got some spices. And the spices are really going to lift this dish up. They're really going to add to this one and, and give it uh, the, the flavours that we're looking for. So we've got a few different spices here. Um, let me go through the different spices we've got. Uh, we've got cumin. We need one teaspoon of cumin. So we've got some cumin uh, and some coriander. Let's have a look. Um, cinnamon, oh, God, so we've got our cumin there, there we are, there's our cumin, uh, we're going to be putting a tablespoon of that in, we've got, um, this, sorry, teaspoon of that in, we've got cinnamon, so we've got our cinnamon, which is there, there we go, our cinnamon uh, there, so we're going to put some cinnamon in there, we've got our coriander, again, you can see our coriander there, so uh, we're going to use a bit of coriander, now, if you, again, if you've not got dried, you can use fresh, that's fine as well. It will still give us the flavors we need there. And then we've got some gamsla, uh, or ginger and stock. Uh, let's have a look. We've got some of that here. Here we go. Uh, we've got some of that one there. That's the one we're looking at there. Um, and also, or, and or ground ginger. So lots of different ones there. Uh, I've got coriander seeds. Now, yeah, if you've got coriander seeds, you can use coriander seeds and you can either crush them up Pestle and mortar, what's that? It's a bowl with a, like a large hammery thing in, you can use that to crush it up. Or alternatively, uh, you, can, you could actually use um, a porcelain bowl with the end of a rolling pin to use an act like to, to break up those seeds. You wanna break them up a little bit, okay? So if you can break them up a little bit, um, that would be great. Um, another way of breaking them up is to put them between two chopping boards and just rubbing them together, that would work well as well. So good questions coming in here, good questions. Um, and I'm happy to, to answer those questions as we're going along. That's for our main curry. Um, then we've got the bread. So we're gonna make it some flatbreads. Now we're trying to keep, we're also thinking a nod to veganuary here. So I have said self-raising flour. So we've got some, you know, got some, some self-raising flour there, um, which is great. We're gonna be using 200 grams of that. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, salt with there. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my salt. Uh, so I'm just gonna put some salt into that one. Um, a bit of baking powder. Um, so I've got some baking powder here, um, but if you haven't got baking powder, you can always use cream of tartar and bicarbonate soda, that would work, or in fact just bicarbonate soda, because the next ingredient we're putting in is um, our natural yogurt. So um, lots of different variations you can use. Um, you can use a, a, a natural yogurt or a, even a, this is a, a Greek style yogurt to go in here. Um, alternatively, um, you could use something that's dairy alternatives. So if you think about it, veganuary. Um, this is like a, an oatly uh, plain yogurt there, sorry, uh, plain oat yogurt, plain yogurt there. So you can use that as, as well. Um, that would work well as a vegan alternative to this one. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. That's how we're going to be doing it. And uh, because, say, so if you're thinking about veganuary or vegan, um, you can also make sure your make sure make sure your stock is a, ve a vegetarian stock rather than using a beef or chicken stock into that one. Right, that should, you should have now all of your wonderful ingredients laid out, ready to go for you. Um, let's have a look at the, um, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the equipment that we're going to need for today. So the equipment today is, um, we just, oh, da, 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 da. equipment today, there we go. Uh, so we've got the equipment today on the board here. Equipment you're going to need, um, knives, you're going to need some, some knives today. Um, you're going to need, I've got some I've got a, a rounded butter knife there. 
Um, I've also, if I'm using fresh herbs, I've also got, um, and for my onion, I've got a little paring knife, which is a sharp knife. Um, knife safety, let's just think about knife safety. When carrying a knife to your area, can you make sure you carry only one knife at a time? The knife should be pointing down beside you, like you're walking with a soldier, with a point to the floor and the blade behind you. Okay, so if you were to be knocked uh, and it was to fall, it's not going to hurt you. So, and keep hold of it at all times. Um, when you come to washing up, you're, we're talking about this at the end, when it comes to washing up your knife, it's the last thing you wash up. Don't be tempted to brush it off with a dishcloth because you might cut yourself. Try and use a, a brush instead um, and try and keep hold of the knife the whole time. Don't let it fall into the washing up bowl because, again, it'd be hard pulling it out. You might hurt yourself. Don't be tempted to dry it with a tea towel. Leave it at the back of your uh, what, um, area which you'll be washing up, your draining board, to let it drip dry. Um, so, again, you're not like you're not going to be in any harm of being actually able to cut yourself on there. But we do need a sharp knife today for our onions and garlic. Now, that's a little paring knife. I would actually be demonstrating to you today using a cook's knife or a chef's knife, a larger one, so you can see what I'm doing. But you ideally want to be using a small knife there. Um, chopping board, like I said, I've got my chopping board just here. So hopefully you've got your chopping board too to uh, cut safely onto. Um, you've got your tablespoons and teaspoons. So we've got the, the larger spoons and the smaller spoons. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, you're going to be using those ones as well. Um, we've got a couple of bowls. So you need a couple of bowls ready to go. Here are my couple of bowls. Um, so a couple of bowls ready to go. Now, depending on how you're doing your uh, mandarins, you might have fresh mandarins or fresh fruit. You might have fresh chickpeas that you've soaked. Um, if you're using cans um, today, then you're going to need um, so you're going to need a can opener at hand to be able to do that one. Um, uh, and uh, when you're going through and making this one, you might even need a kitchen roll. If you've got a kitchen roll, or I'm using a bit of greaseproof paper actually. Uh, this comes from when we're using our breads. Okay, so we make our bread, bread like uh, flat breads. I've got a um, version of a naan, I suppose, if, uh, that sort of thing. We're making little flat breads to go with our curries. You'll need something like that. Um, saucepans, frying pans. You may have seen the saucepans and frying pans. They are all set up ready to go in the kitchen over there for you already. And we'll come back to those in a minute. So mine are already set up over there. Um, so make sure you've got your. Um, yeah, you've got those two, so you're looking at yeah, yeah, saucepans and frying pans and some wooden spoons. They're already over there for you. And a rolling pin. So um, I've got a rolling pin here. Um, now, again, if you haven't got a rolling pin close to hand, and as I say, we're at home, we're not at school at the moment. Um, so if you haven't got a rolling pin, what could you use instead of a rolling pin? Well, I want to try and get you all cooking. So you could use... Um, a milk bottle or a glass cordial bottle that would work but just be careful with glass when you're rolling it so um, those sort of bottles would also work as a rolling pin instead um, to do it you could actually get away with not using a rolling pin altogether when making this one but just for quality and uh, finish it's good to be using a rolling pin later on um, right any more questions let me check before we start then um uh, coriander seeds yep good we talked about that i've got uh ground cumin uh will that work uh as well yep yep absolutely ground is going to be fine um and some of cinnamon sticks yep so can we use cinnamon sticks yeah if you grind up the cinnamon sticks that's uh that for the spice that's good and we're gonna be using some say mixed spice if you can't get hold of like um this one's a uh this uh gamma type um spice you can just use um, a standard uh, curry powder will work um, perfectly fine in that one too. All right. Hopefully now you have got your equipment ready. You've got your ingredients ready. You've got yourself ready. You've got your area ready. We're now safe to start to cook. Okay. And I'm going to talk you through step by step how this is going to work. Okay, um, let's uh, let's do it. Let's get ready to go. So I'm going to put onto the board now the recipe for, that we're going to be following, the first bit, the curry part, and then we'll go on to the flatbread. So this is my banana and mandarin curry, my uh, famous fruit and sweetie curry that, um, I can say, sounds a little bit odd to begin with, but bear with me and I think you're going to like it. How big should the saucepans be? Good question. So um, um, I'm going to actually do mine, in a, if you've got a very large deep frying pan, you can do the whole lot in a large deep frying pan and that will work. Um, or alternatively, if you haven't got a large frying pan, maybe uh, a large saucepan would work, a large deep saucepan, or a combination of a small saucepan and a smaller frying pan will also work. So depending on what you can get hold of, but for me, I'm going to be using a large frying pan, a large deep frying pan. I'm going to try and get the whole lot done in that. Okay, so it's entirely up to you how you want to play that one. 
Good. Um, okay, so let's go through, and we're now going to be uh, getting onto our. Uh, that's good. Fabulous. No problems. Um, we're now going to get onto the recipe. So the first thing we're going to do is step one up here. We're going to be chopping up our onions, crushing and chopping up our garlic. And once we've done our garlic and our onions, we're going to be sauteing those off to lightly fry in the pan, not to actually brown and a oh, different sort of browning process there. So we talked about the browning processes in a banana, um, which was our enzymic browning. So the enzymes are making that go brown. Then we're going to be, uh, we don't, but the, if we left our onions too long, that would be a non enzyme browning, that would be caramelization. We talk about that GCSE. We've got lots of GCSE hints I'm putting in here. Um, uh, and, but we don't want these ones to brown. So, sauteing is just lightly frying so they don't brown, so they don't caramelize, so they don't go into non enzyme browning. Um, we're going to drain our chickpeas. Um, we're going to um, add the chickpeas to the pan. So, uh, those will be drained and softened chickpeas, whether they were the fresh ones that you've been um, leaving overnight to soak or indeed if they were the ones that um, you have um, got from a can. So we'll do that one as well. So we're going to be looking at those together, um, putting those in the pan together and cooking those ones off, so softening those ones off. Then we've got the banana, the mandarin, which we'll put into the same mix and simmer all of that together and simmer it and concentrate it down. Then we'll go on to adding our tomatoes, our spices on there, so we get a beautiful smelling curry just wafting around the house. Um, and then, oh, so it's looking a little bit, I'll just, uh, you can't quite read that one, but bring the whole lot to the boil and then simmer. Um, let me, uh, I'll just move that camera so you can see the projector there. It's a little bit um, squiffy on there, but hopefully, if I just move that, there we go. Hopefully you can see that's a little bit more focus. Um, uh, we're going to be uh, then bringing those all together, simmering that all down and reducing it down. Now, why are we making this? Why, am, why have I chosen this particular recipe? Why is, what's the point in it? Well, the GCSE, source making is one of the uh, key skills where you do at GCSE. If you chose to do GCSE, food preparation and nutrition, and it's a fabulous and exciting course. But one of those, I mean, we've got, we do breads, we do pastas, we do pastries, uh, we do meat and fish, uh, breaking down and portioning and filleting, uh, and we do sauces. And this is a reduction sauce, everybody. So this would be, a, and what we're doing is we are going to be reducing down the sauce, uh, reject, making it like a reduction sauce. And as we do it, we're going to be concentrating the flavours and all of these other parts that can make this sensory-wise such a delicious curry. So the smells, the flavours, and everything will be concentrated down. And as we concentrate them down, so we're going to be making a, a version of a reduction sauce. And sauces, like I say, are one of the key things we look at when we get to GCC, whether it's a tomato reduction sauce, whether it's a white sauce, like a, um, a bechamel roux, um, or even, even what we call things like volute or mune sauce. Lots of different types of sauces we can look at when we get to GCC. But this is why we're doing this one. And breads, obviously breads is another GCC skill. So we're going to touch on breads today as well. Uh, okay, we'll do bread. Well, that's all simmering away. Let's let's get started then. And the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the onion. Hurrah. Um, here we have my onion. It is a big onion. Okay. Um, now we have got a hairy top. We have got a, um, a rooty bottom. Uh, now we are going to cut this onion safely and without crying. So how are we going to do this one? Well, you've probably seen it before, but we're going to show you again because I like this way of being able to do it. If you can imagine um, that we have got our uh, onion looks something like that. Okay, with our rooty bottoms, there we go. And we have got um, the top there as well. So that's the top and the rooty bottoms. Now, I like to think of an onion not as an onion, but more of a, a witch. And it's a little pointed hat up there, and there it is, her eyes, there we go, there she is. Uh, there is my witch. Okay. So how are we going to cut this witch? Uh, how are we up so we can don't cry? Because now the, the smelly bit, the smelly bit that makes you cry is in the base here, okay? It's in the base of the onion just here. Um, it's this, in this part down here on the smelly feet. Okay, and um, that's the smelly feet. Now, are we trying to try and cut as little as we can through those smelly feet, um, but we still need to cut this up very, very fine. So, first cut that we're going to do is straight down the middle. Okay, we're just going to go straight down the middle, first of all. Okay, and that's our cut number one. Okay, uh, and what is that? None. Well, I like to think of an ABC of cutting. 
The first thing is uh, A for action with our knives. So our knives, we are brought to brought to our chopping boards in a safe uh, manner. We've left that one at the in the middle of the table, not at the end of the table where it can drop onto feet, but in the middle of the table. I'm now picking this up in a safe way. I've only brought one knife over. So this is my actions with a knife. Then I've got a B and a C. So let's look at those. The B and C stand for cuts, A, B and C. So think about, first of all, your actions with your knife. You've got a chopping board. You've got to put the knife in the correct place. B. This is B. Now, it might look about a bit like a hand, but it's not a hand at all. What this is, is a, anyone know? In fact, what sort of, cut, what, is, what shape am I making there? Well done, straight up on the, uh, on the, on the Talking Girls Grammar there. It is indeed a bridge. This is a bridge. Well done there. Uh, well done there. So in that bridge, we put the knife. Like it's a train going through a bridge. Uh, that way it can't cut into your fingers, okay? So I put the food in the middle there with between my thumb and forefinger to make myself a bridge shape, and then I cut through the bridge. There we go. So I'm gonna put my onion in the middle. I'm gonna hold around the middle, around the tummy of the onion, not the ends, not the two ends there. I don't wanna hold the two ends. Around the middle there. And then it forms itself a little bridge. And that bridge is enough space to put my knife through. So um, you're gonna be using a smaller knife, or like a little paring knife, and you're gonna be putting the paring knife through the middle on the board, and you're gonna chop down through the middle, um, straight the way through so that it's done half. A, B, C. Action with a knife, B is for bridge. Let's do this one. I'm just going to just show you on the board. Let's reduce this. Um, let's uh, let's just do this one. I'm going to just show you how I'm doing it. And let's zoom in a little bit there. There we go. Just going to zoom in for you. Zoom in one more time. Okay. Uh, let's have a look down here on the board. So what I've got here is I've got my onion. And what we'll do with my onion now, forming a bridge. There, uh, you can see that one, the bridge. There we go. I've formed a bridge around the outside. And what I'm going to do now is with my knife, I'm going to go through the middle. Okay, just one knife cut all the way down the middle. Now, you might be thinking, "You're this is unsafe. I don't feel I don't feel safe doing this." In which case, you can use another device to make the bridge. You could use one of these. Now, you might think of this as a fork. I think of this as three different bridges. Now, I can put that into the middle of my onion, like so, and then I can use those bridges and cut through the middle of those bridges. So again, I'm using my knife, and I can just cut through the middle of the onion that way. So I can use a knife, a fork, a knife and fork, if I feel unsafe, and cut through that way. I can use that as the bridge, or use my hands, and I'm just going to cut straight the way through using a bridge all the way through to the bottom. Okay, and now I've got two halves, two halves of the onion. Okay, so two halves of the onion there on the board, and we're going to now cut those up. Can you see that one there? So I've got the tops of my onions there, and I've got the base of my onions there, flat down on the board. Okay, let me come back to, the, to me now. Um, why, oops, zoom out. Uh, so that's my first cut, and um, we're, we're gonna be doing, um, we're gonna be doing the next cut, which is number two. We're just gonna be taking off the magic hat. Okay, so I'm just gonna, the next cut will be two. So we've done one, and we're now gonna cut two. Okay, um, there's my uh, cut number two. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, we've done the A. A is for the action with the knives. B is for a bridge cut. So now we come to C. Now, C stands for what? Well, I'd like to put your thumbs right back, fingers over the top, and this is a... Anybody know? It could be on YouTube or, or uh, to Talkie Girls Grammar. What do we think this is? Yeah, you got it right again. Talking about grammars, you got it right. Let's anyone on YouTube know what sort of what sort of uh, what sort of cut we use this one. Brr. No, okay, I'll tell you. It's a bridge. Okay, uh, it's a bridge. A claw. We're going from a claw to a bridge. Sorry, other way around. A bridge to a claw. It's a claw. 
You're right, it's a claw. So here we go, a claw. Arr, arr, arr. Even I'm getting confused now. Um, so we go, first one is A, how we hold the knife correctly. B is for bridge. C is for claw. Now it's really important when we do a claw, we've got our thumbs right back and our fingers over the top. We don't want to be leaving thumbs out. That's wrong. Okay, no, no, no. Because if you're cutting with the with the thumb right out, and we're gonna be we end up chopping the ends of thumbs off, and we don't want to. So thumbs right back over the top like this. Now, how do we do this cut? Well, what we do is we use a knife and we use put the blunt side of the knife, so that's the the long blunt side here, not the sharp side the long blunt side there we rest that against our knuckles and we cut away okay so we're cutting away the only part that should come near our knuckles will be the blunt side of our knife to cut away okay let me show you that on the onion so i'm going to chop the top of the onion off here with my thumb fingers down let me show you on the camera let's move down so you can see that on the board i'm just going to zoom in again so you can see that one um, so on the board there, you can now see the two onions. And what I'm going to do with those two onions is very simply, I'm going to just chop the ends off but with a claw. So I'm going to put my thumb in, my fingers over the top. You can see all that just there. Thumbs in, fingers over the top. And I'm going to press that onto the top there. Now I'm going to use the knife and I'm going to put the blunt side against my knuckle and I'm going to slice the top of that onion off. So let me do the same for the other one. Uh, the magic hat is gonna come off this onion. So I'm just gonna, it doesn't worry if you've got a bit of paper, just get rid of those. Thumb right back, fingers over the top, near the base, and I'm just gonna slice that off the top. Okay, so just slice that off the top. Let's take some of the paper off there as well. Not the bottom, not the bottom, no, not the bottom but just at the top, okay? Um, uh, now I've got two onions now with uh, the top taken off. And the next thing I can do, I can put my knives down, I can stop with the knives now, let's put those knives away. What I want to do now is I'm gonna peel back the skin of the onion. So keeping the onion flat on the board, what I'm doing is peeling off the outer layer. There we go. If it comes off completely, don't worry about it, but I'm just gonna peel that one back. I'm gonna do the same with the other one. Let's move, clear my work surface so you can see better. What I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna just peel back that, try and keep it as flat as you can, so you don't get any of those juices from the smelly feet coming up and making you cry. Okay, now that one's come all the way off. So don't worry, this one has stayed on a little bit, and that's good. Okay, let's come back to me. So um, what we've got going on there, let's uh, zoom out again. Hello. Um, so what we've got going on here, we've just cut up the onion uh, one, two. Let me just write what those are on the board so you can see there. Number one was our bridge. Number two, so you can see a bit better. Number two was our claw. And we've got it cut in two like that. Now, we've then taken all the skin from the top and we brought all that down. Okay, so we're now left with this situation. Your onion's looking at something like this, all that papery part is down there. You've got smelly feet still underneath. No top, no hat. And the good thing is, what you can probably see down now is your onion has got some lines on it, like that. So let me show you on the camera there. If you have a look, hopefully you can see this one. Um, you can see that the onion now has lines going down there. Let me show you another one so you can see it there. The onion now got lines running all the way down the side there. And that's actually going to be our next cutting line, okay? So that's going to be the line that we use for the next cutting line when we pick our knives back up. And that will be to do two more cuts on our onions nice and safely to do the next bit, okay? So here we go. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn back my board here. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up my knife safely, and then I'm going to be starting with a. Let's see if we can. I'm trying not to confuse you this time. This is a. Who knows? Who knows? Who's quick off the mark to type it in? What sort of cut? Bridge. We're going to start with a bridge. So we're going to start with a bridge, and the next cut. Oh, the, we're halfway through. The next cut we're, we are going to do is we're going to do cut number three. Number three cut will be going down. Down, 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 down. Now, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom, okay? Let me explain why I'm not going to do that one. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go down here. I'm not going to go there. Um, I'm going to go down about three, just over three quarters of the way down with that cup, with my bridge. I'll just write down there so it says bridge. my bridge. Um, I'm not going to go down all the way. I'm only going to go down at three quarters. And once I've done the bridge that way, I'm going to do again the claw the other. So that's number four. Four, four. Claw. Okay. So I'm going the other way. So I'm going down one way, three, then across the other way. Let me show you that one on close up. So let me go down onto my onion so you can see that one let's go down it's a bit too close okay okay so hopefully you can see that one on the board here now so i've got my two onion halves i've got my knife i'm going to start with my bridge a b c i'm holding my knife correctly a for action let's do one at a time i'm going to be putting my thumb and forefinger around the middle and then I'm going to use that bridge to cut lots of lines across. So I'm going to literally cut down as many of those lines as I can. And each time I'm doing it, I'm not going to go all the way to the base. But I'm, because I don't want to cut into the area, that smelly feet area, that's going to make me cry. Okay. And when you get close to your thumb, stop. Now, after the bridge, we're going to go into the claw. So... Thumb right back, so thumb right back, can you see that one there? Fingers over the top, and we're gonna do cut the opposite way. So we've gone one way, we're now gonna go the other way. So pressing down, I'm just gonna slice, there we go. Cutting the other way down. So we're practicing our knife skills here. And again, I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. Now you might think, well, that's a bit of a waste. No, not at all. What we can do is we can put that in the food waste that can then be uh, either composted, if you'll do that, or alternatively, you could even try and put that in some water and grow yourself a new onion. Let me show you that whole process again. Let me move that to the side. So I've got my onion. Bridge, first of all. I'm going to cut down. We're not going to go all the way to the end. As many of those lines that you can see on the onion that are there already. Not going to go all the way to my thumb because I don't want to cut my thumb. Thumb back, fingers over the top. I'm going to shut, form a claw. My blunt side of my knife is resting against my knuckles, but nowhere else is coming near my fingers. And I'm going to be slicing that down. Oh, let me show you about the thumb, right? Imagine that if you put your thumb there, you hadn't done it and you kind of just slice it. You're just going to slice the thumb up. So make sure that thumb is right back when you do your claw. Okay. Now, if you do start to cry, please, please, please do not put your thumb, wipe your eyes. Because guess what? You've got juices from the bottom of the onion on your fingers. You start rubbing that into your eyes, that's going to irritate your eyes even more. If you do have, um, if you do start to cry, get some kitchen roll in a little bit of water, um, and that's fine. Now, uh, that's fine on, on YouTube, Drew, saying that if you cut yours a little bit smaller, that's absolutely fine. Now, I'm going to talk about the different sizes. So you may have done this before, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tell you about the different sizes of cuts because you can do – these are these are a certain sort of cut, and you can do different types and sizes of these cuts. I'm just putting mine into the compost bin so that I don't cry. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put it back into the compost bin so I don't cry. Um, let's get back to the screen. Um, so well done, Drew. 
uh, uh, let's have a look. Um, uh, so, although it was just on YouTube, um, let's come back to me. So, there we go, back to me. Um, so, the cuts here are different sorts of cuts. Now, each of these um, little bits that we've cut up now, if you have a look at them, very, they form like a, a six sided cuboid. Now, that six sided cuboid um, is uh, what will you sometimes you use it in a game, it will have dots on it. That is what? What sort of shape is that? What's it, what might you call that one if it had dots on it and used it for a game? Go on, anyone there want to just write out what you think that is? Go on. So I'd roll it in a game, the six sided cuboid with dots on it. And it is in fact a dice. Of course it is. It's a dice. So this is a dice cut. Now, you can get different size dice cuts. You can go, um, you can go really, really small, um, or you can go slightly larger. Um, I'm just making them slightly larger today to show you, but that's absolutely fine if you, if you, um, if you have made them uh, larger or smaller. We have names for that. At GCSE, we, we start to look at things called uh, Brunoise, Macedoine, and that's about whether you do your dicing larger or smaller. Um, and again, we'll come to that as we start going into year nine and we start going into GCSE a little bit more and look at Brunoise and Macedoine cuts. Um, so that's the, uh, you can do some really fine, 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 fine dicing. Mine aren't the finest of dicing because I want to show you the skill of cutting safely today. Okay, um, so we've done our uh, diced up uh, onion. Now we're going to very quickly look at the garlic next. So the garlic um, is uh, like the same family as it. Looks like it's very similar. It's got a bulb here. Now inside that bulb, you will find um, some cloves. So here's one I've opened up earlier. And you can see inside there, if you look carefully, you can see all those little cloves inside. They're like segments, like the segments of a chocolate orange. Um, you've got all the different segments here. Now I can break those apart. And then we can cut them in a very similar way to the way we cut an onion. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing um, doing some bridges and claws, but teeny tiny little bridges and claws on this one. So here's my little clove or segment of garlic. Here it is. You get about twelve, and a garlic is about right. So so um, that's what we we're looking at. Um, so there is my garlic. Now how do we chop this one? Let me just show you. I'm going to zoom in again on the camera there so you can see. There we go. Just gonna have to zoom in so you can see there as well. Um, so we've got our um, we've got our uh, garlic. There it is. There's the garlic on the board. Uh, you can see that one there as well. There's the garlic on the board. Now with the garlic on the board, what we're going to do is we are going to use a tiny, 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 tiny um, bridges and claws. But before we start that one, we're just going to take off the top and tail. Of the well, around top and tail of the garlic. I'm just taking the two ends of our garlic. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to peel off all of the outside paper, a bit like we would do for the onion. Once you've topped and tailed it, you can do that one. Let me just show you that. I'm just going to, if you can see that on the camera, I'm just topped and tailed my garlic. I'm just going to peel off all that papery stuff because we don't want to be eating the paper in our food. We want just the beautiful garlic in the middle. I'm just put those bits of paper. There we are. That's all the paper. Just come off the outside, having topped and tailed our garlic. You can see that one. Uh, now what I'm going to do is clean my work surface. I'm now going to do a little bridge and a little claw. So it's a teeny tiny, let me, I'm going to have to zoom in really nice here. Um, uh, so we've got a teeny tiny little um, piece of garlic. I'm a teeny tiny little knife. I'm going to do a little bridge, sorry, a little um, bridge first. I'm probably going to get two cuts here and you can go all the way through this one. Teeny tiny little bridge. There it is. And now I'm going to do a teeny tiny little claw. There we go. So I've now chopped that up teeny tiny. It might look big there, but we just zoom out and show you how small that is. Okay, you can see how small that one is now. It's, it, it is pretty teeny tiny small. Um, okay, uh, so that's what we are going to be doing now. We've got our onion and we've got our garlic ready to go. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, hope back to me. All right. So um, with our onion and garlic, we're now going to get those onion and garlic and we're going to be um, putting those into the pan and take those over to the pan with me. And I'm going to be uh, just sauteing those off. Then I'm going to drain my chickpeas 
Um, and I'm going to be putting those in there as well. Now, to drain your chickpeas, what could you use? Well, it depends on what you've got. If you've, I'm using a, a tinned hit of chickpeas here that has already got a wrinkle on. So I'm just going to pull back the wrinkle a little bit, then pour all the water away. Um, okay. If you have drained them, you might have been using something called a colander. So a colander looks like, let me just show you what a colander looks like. A colander looks like something like one of these. So it's like a giant sieve with giant holes in, which I mean, the chickpeas won't, won't uh, go down the sink, but the water will when you pour it into that. So we need to drain those ones to go in there. So I'm going to go over to my sink area and over to my hob. I'm going to drain my chick, drain my um, chickpeas. I'm going to put my onions and garlic into the pan there. And we are going to get ready to start some cooking. All right, Lee. Um, Let's do that one together. So if you want to just move, if I move the cameras around so you can see what I'm doing. Um, let's go round to my kitchen there so you can see what I'm doing there. And let's just move that round as well so you can see what we're going to be doing. And we'll just go up to my kitchen there. Let's so zoom in a little bit. Okay. Just going to move that one so you can see. Uh, hopefully you can see there. Wonderful. Let's get going. All right, here I am. I am just going to, oops, just going to move that one around so I can see what I'm going with there. Right. Sorry. There we go. Let's move my camera around. Still here. Still here. Excellent. Okay. Um. So I've got my uh, chickpeas here, and I've got my uh, chickpeas here, and I've got my onion and garlic that I chopped up earlier. And we're now going to get all of that ready to go. So first thing is, got myself a large heavy pan. Now, if you're using a pan here um, that's black, like a non-stick one, you need to use wooden equipment inside it. You don't want to be using metal in there, otherwise it's going to scrape all the non-stick off the inside of it. Okay, so I'm just going to use a, uh, you can use a wooden spatula or a wooden spoon with this one. We're going to get that onto the heat. So on that goes. Remember, with the heat, you are in control of the heat. The heat is not in control of you. So in the kitchen, um, make sure you, you are in control of the heat. If you think something's getting too hot, you can remove it off there. Also, when you're putting it onto the pans or frying pans onto the hob, please don't have the pan handles pointing out. Otherwise, when you walk past them, you could end up knocking them off. Okay, so we're going to be putting that one just in the middle there, okay? Um, and we're going to move the pan handle off to the side so I'm not going to knock into it. Right, into that, I'm going to put in the onion and the garlic that we chopped up just now. So in all of that goes, onion, garlic, it's all going into my pan there. Perfect. Now, uh, do you need to put any oil in that? No, you don't need to put any oil into this. We're only going to be, uh, say, sauteing it, so we need to keep it moving in the pan, like dancing in the pan. So we're going to keep it moving in the pan to soften it off. If you did want to put some oil in, um, I would suggest probably some sort of light spray oil. We might be put a little bit of that in if you wanted to. Um, or if you're going to be using an olive oil, you could put a little bit, just a, a teaspoon's worth of olive oil in there. Um, that would be fine. But otherwise, just keep that moving in the pan. I'm just keeping that moving in the pan as I do it, stirring away, just to soften these up. Okay, so that's just softening up. While that's doing that, I'm going to make sure the pan handles off to the side. Just put my chickpeas here. So with my chickpeas, I'm just going to open the wrinkle on my chickpeas and drain the water away from my chickpeas. So I've just partially opened that one there. Just going to go to the sink here and pour the chickpea water in. Now, if you are vegan or you're looking at making vegan foods, you can use that chickpea water. It's called an aquafaba. And what you can do is um, you can make meringues from that water. I know it seems weird and wonderful. Um, I have actually got so much of it in the fridge at the moment, it's fine. 
I only need to be, you can't use that, that water, you can whisk it up and make meringues, vegan meringues from that one, and other, eat it as another egg alternative. So that's my chickpeas, all drained and ready to go. I'm just going to stir up this again, make sure you, you don't want it to brown, if it starts to brown, just take it off the heat. Remember, you're in control of the heat here. It starts to spit, take it off the heat, and then reduce the heat down again. You're in control. That is just lovely softening. And what do we mean by softening? What we're looking for to happen here is we want it to, um, we want you to be able to uh, see, you might be able to see on here, just sort of turning slightly translucent. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. It should be slightly translucent on that one. Okay, um, so I'm just going to, that's done there. Onion and garlic is in there. Next one. Now the onion and garlic are in there. I'm going to go with my um, chickpeas there. I'm going to get my chickpeas into that one now as well. So I'm going to in the chickpeas are going to go into there, and I'm going to stir those through as well. Okay, the chickpeas there. Drained weight 250. Um, a 400 gram uh, can of chickpeas there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for in there. In they go. Let's give it a good old stir and we'll stir that one through. So stirring that one through. And again, we're just looking to soften it. While that's doing that, I'm just gonna see if we've got some questions come up there. Um, uh, are the chickpeas in yet? So we just put the chickpeas in now. Uh, any other questions? Um, uh, too fast, sorry. So we've done the, uh, let me just go through that one and recap on where we are. So a couple of questions there said, um, where are we up to? So what we've done is now in the pan, We've got onion, garlic, and drained chickpeas, and I'm just stirring those ones through. You can hopefully see that one on the, the camera there. I'm just stirring those ones through at the same time. So here we go. I'm just gonna stir those up. And what am I doing? I'm softening. So I'm softening these up. So, so we're breaking it down, softening these ones up so they're gonna be really beautiful um, to eat here. Remember, pans, pan handles off to the side. Um, some of you might be saying, what sort of pan should you use? You could like use a heavy pan like this one. So this is a stainless steel one, so I could actually use a metal spoon to stir this one if I wanted to. But you'd want something with a rubber or plastic end, um, because if you use a metal spoon in a metal pan, that would conduct heat and you'd hurt yourself. But you could use like a, a metal, so you could use something like one of these in that one if you wanted to stir it. But I'm going to use a wooden spoon, uh, or I could say you could use a, a wooden spoon spatula there, one to, to move that one through and stir it. Okay, so that is simmering down nicely. Um, okay, so it's just simmering down. We're getting to the stage from now. Uh, so if you're looking at the recipe cards from now, we are just on to number four. So on number four on your recipe cards is where we're up to. Number four, it means that we are just starting to um, soften it all down, frying it all in the same pan, whether it's a saucepan or a frying pan. And that's just happening here right now. Okay, that's frying down nicely, simmering down nicely. I'm going to turn that to a really low heat now, the lowest heat possible. And I'm going to come to um, mixing up our spices. So it's on a really low heat, and we're just going to keep coming back to that one. And while we're doing that, we're going to concentrate on some of the other ingredients. First of all, we're going to look at our fruits to go with the vegetables, and then we'll start looking at our spices. Okay, so let's... Leave that one, keep an eye on it. We'll keep coming back to it, but it's on the lowest heat possible with the pan handle away from the edge. So there's no chance of knocking into it. All right, let's go back. Okay, everybody back to me. Fabulous, and back to the recipe. Let me just quickly go back to the recipe that's on the board there so you can see the recipe on the board. And let's uh, zoom out, there we go. So the recipe on the board there, you can see that we are up to, do, 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 do. we are up to number five on the board there. And we need to get the other bits and pieces ready to go into our dishes. So let's get those other bits in. We've done vegetables, we're now doing fruit. Okay, so we're gonna be moving on some fruity, fruity fruit, fruity fruit, we like fruity fruit. Um, so the fruity fruit we're gonna be using is going to be bananas. Here's my banana. Uh, we're gonna be using the banana and we're gonna be uh, slicing that banana up. Now, with a banana, obviously you can use just a rounded butter knife. It's gonna be absolutely fine. You know, one of those non-sharpie rounded butter knife will be fine. Um, 
It smells so good already. Oh, I'm glad it. I'm so glad it is. So here we have banana. And let's peel my banana there. Um, like I say, the dark earth is going off. This is brilliant. We waste so many bananas are thrown away and fruits thrown away because it looks it doesn't look quite right. So this is a great way of being able to use up leftover fruits that you might think, well, that's going a bit dark color. Other thing you can do with bananas is banana bread, which is a fabulous one as well. So what am I doing? I'm just literally just going to slice this one up. If I just show you on the board there, let's zoom in there. There we go. Just zooming in there for you so you can see. There we go. Um, so if you can see on the board there, let me just show you there. So I've just got my banana. I'm now just going to slice up that banana. Very simply, slicing that up. I'm using a bridge, so a thumb over the top. Fingers, now why am I going straight and not doing a claw? Well, because if something's long and thin already, Sorry, not, I'm sorry, go straight in with the claw. Why am I not using a bridge? So it's a claw. Arr, claw, claw, thumb right back. So why am I using a, a claw and not a bridge? Well, because it's long and thin already, you're absolutely fine. And you see, again, I'm still using the same process of my claw. I'm resting the, the blunt side of the knife, bluntest side of the knife against it. So I've got my banana all chopped up nice and nicely there. Okay, in with the banana, I've got my mandarins. So um, actually, this mandarin, uh, these mandarin pieces um, I've got here don't have a, um, a pull ring pull top, so I will need to use a can opener for these. But I, instead, I could have used just some old fruit that's starting to go hard, and I could just peel those, and I could put those in there. So I can literally just peel those ones and use the segments from that. So these are these are slightly going off, these ones now. And they're a bit, a bit gooey. You might have some left over from Christmas there. You think, oh, they're getting a bit stale. So you can still use those ones and use the segments from the from those and they can go in there. I'm going to use some that are already been, um, say, already been done. I'm going to be putting these ones in. If you're using fruit, try and do fruit in water rather than in syrup if you can. I'm just going to open that one up. But, you know, we're in lockdown larder situations. So whatever you can get your heart hands on um, would be good from a soft fruit point of view. So I'm just opening my can there. So I've got my can of soft fruit open up there, okay, and in with my can of soft fruit and my bananas, I'm going to be putting the whole of that into my uh, chickpeas, onion and garlic. So let's go back to, let's go back to my kitchen and we're going to be putting those back in there. Let me zoom in. There we go. We're back to the pan, back to the kitchen. Uh, let's go back over there. Got Rosie asleep in the kitchen there. Little, little old Rosie on the new dog for Christmas there. There we go. I've just seen her in the corner there, in the kitchen. All right, so I've got my mandarins and I've got my uh, bananas there. I'm going to take my mandarins and bananas over to my uh, frying pan or a large saucepan, depending on what you're using, and I'm going to place those in there as well now. So we'll put the mandarins. Now, can you put them in there with the water? Yes, the mandarin water is uh, absolutely fine. It's going there. That's, that'll be absolutely wonderful. Um, you've got your bananas going there as well. So I'm just going to be putting, up in, putting in on now. Our chopped up bananas are also all going to go into there. In they go. So any so it's a great one to using up fruit from a fruit bowl that might be going off this way. So we don't want to be wasting our food. And this is a great way to be able to use up those uh, fruits. And say so this is a, a recipe that was actually put together as part of the some work for the Love Food Hate Waste. Love Food Hate Waste have got a wonderful website about using up leftover foods and some different recipe ideas there. So it's well worth going and having a look at that one. Right. So I'm just going to keep stirring this all up. So I've got my onion. My garlic, my banana, my mandarins, and they, just on a low simmer, are just going off, going ahead there. Now, if you're wondering where we are now, we're all the way down to step number six on the recipe there. So step number six on the recipe is where we're up to, and that's what you, you should be up to. Two bananas, mandarins, um, what have we got? Bananas, mandarins, uh, bananas, mandarins, garlic, onions, Chickpeas. We've got the five items in there already, but we're going to put even more in. 
I'll give you even more bits and pieces in there. The next one is going to be another fruit, sometimes known as a veg, but uh, fruit it is. And the next one is going to be our tin tomatoes. So if you can grab your tin tomatoes, here's my tin tomatoes here. Um, so I've got some chopped up tin, chopped up tomatoes in my tin here. Now, if you're not using tin tomatoes, um, you can use fresh tomatoes and that'd be fine. They can go in there as well. I'm going to open this tin up. That's all going to go into the pan as well. So let's get that one in there as well. We're going to turn that heat up in a bit, but let's just get that one in there. Let's really pull one, this one again. And I'm just going to pour all of that straight into my pan. In it goes, in it goes, all of that into my pan there. Let's get the pressure, all of that's out. In it pops. I'm going to recycle these ones, so let's just go and put those ones in the, the recycling. Um, you can also use your um, tins. I use tins for things like flower pots as well, or putting um, knives and forks in, which is kind of good as well, so you can reuse it that way, or you can put it for recycling. Let's put those in for recycling. But stir all of this through. Oh, the colours are looking wonderful in here. If you can quite see that one on the camera there, but we've got beautiful colours going on there. We've got the tomato, the red of the tomato, the yellow of the banana, the orange, the cream. It's all looking wonderful. I'm smelling, smelling good, but it's not quite the curry yet. So let's put that one back on the stove. Just going to put that on a simmer. Remember, pan handles away, spoon handles away, and let's get on with the next bit. Now we get the fun bit of spices, and we're going to spice things up. I'm going to mix all these spices up, and then we're going to be putting them in the pan. So let's get back to the board, and let's go back to me. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. So we are now all the way down here. We're at number seven. We're now going to mix up our spices. So I'm going to get a little bowl here. I'm going to be mixing up my spices into this bowl. So what do we need? Let's go through these ones step by step. One teaspoon of the cumin. Um, where are we? Cumin, cumin, cumin. Coriander, cumin. There we go. So a teaspoon. So a little teaspoon here. There we go. There's my teaspoon. I'm going to put a little teaspoon of the cumin in there. Good. Cumin's into that bowl. That's in there. One teaspoon of that. Next, after the cumin, we're going to be putting the cinnamon. So uh, cinnamon, in it, here it is. Teaspoon again. We're doing one teaspoon, as it says there, number seven. Teaspoon of the cumin. And in, teaspoon of cumin goes. Okay, sorry, cinnamon goes. So cinnamon and cumin. So we've got cinnamon and cumin, one teaspoon of each of those. Um, then we're going to be putting half a teaspoon of carrot coriander in there. So where's my coriander? There it is. Half a teaspoon of the coriander. Let's get that one in there as well. Half a teaspoon of coriander. In that goes with the cumin and the cinnamon. So cumin and cinnamon, one teaspoon. Half a teaspoon for the coriander. And the garam masala, there we go. Half a teaspoon of that one too. That one goes in there as well. If you wanted to, you could put some, um, just uh, just a plain curry. Powder, powder, obviously curry, curry powder is a blend as it is anyway of it. So if you wanted to put that in, you could put some of that in there. But we've already got a nice blend of spices already in there. But I'm just gonna be, um, there we go. So give that a good stir up. Mix up our own spices there. Oh, now that is fabulous. If we had smell -O vision that would be just wonderful there. Mm, loving it. Um, so those now are going to go in with with our um, in with our banana and our mandarins and our chickpeas and our onions and the garlic. All of these spices are going to go in with that now. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit of stock in there. Uh, now stock is like a little package of crushed up, dried up vegetables in there, or sometimes you can have a dried up powdered uh, from meat, so beef stock, chicken stock. We're gonna use a vegetable stock in this because we need vegetable, vegan type curry with this one. Um, so whatever stock you can get your hands on, if uh, we say we're locked down a lot of situations, but um, I'm gonna use a vegetable one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crumble a little bit of vegetable stock into this one. If yours is quite a dry mix at the moment, you can put a little bit of boiling water with your crushed up stock just to go into this one. Um, so depending on whether you need to, I'm mine's a fairly wet mix so far because I put the juices in with the mandarins. There was still a little bit of juices, uh, waters left over from the chickpea in there. So mine's still quite a wet mix and obviously you've got tomatoes in there. But 
If you need to add some hot water in at this point, you can boil it from a boiling kettle or some hot water into that, you can do. Um, so I'm going to add the spices in now. Questions? Um, I didn't have any stock. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. If you don't have any stock, that is absolutely fine. You don't need to. Um, that that we, we, it depends how you like your curry. But what you can do instead of a, instead of a stock, if we just reduce it down for longer. And don't forget, reducing it down is going to concentrate it into our reduction source. So you don't need a stock if you haven't got it. So that's good. Good questions. Right. Let's go back to my kitchen. Um, how much? Uh, how much ginger? So uh, ginger, half a teaspoon. Oh, yeah, let's put some ginger in there. Good point. Uh, did I not put that one in? No, I didn't. Yeah, ginger. Good point. Everybody, I'm going to put half a teaspoon of ginger in there as well. In it goes. Ginger, half a teaspoon. In it goes. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Right, back over to my kitchen. Let's go back, go back, go back. And I can smell, already smell that coming together really, really well. Let's go back to it. Okay, so I've got my spices there. Spices are all going to be emptied in. I'm just going to put all of my spices now straight in there. There they go. Um, I'm going to be giving that a little stir around. Combine all of that together. So here we go, I'm just going to combine all of that now, the tomatoes, the fruits, the vegetables, all of that together with the spices. Now that, that's so good. That is so, so good. It really is. But we need to reduce it down now. I'm going to put in a little bit of stock, because actually I think mine's a little bit liquidy. So I'm going to grab a little bit of stock here from me. Um, which stock should we do? We've got some vegetable stock there. A uh, big meat stock, meat stock, vegetable stock. Uh, yeah, we'll put a little bit in, I think. Just put a little bit in. You can also get stock in, in um, uh, you can get little packets now of stock as well. So you can get little packets stock, which are like a, like a jelly that are in there as well. Um, so that would work well. Um, let me put some stock in here. So they come, they come in little packets like that, so little square packets. I'm just going to crumble a little bit of that into it. There we go, just put a little bit into it here. Just crumble a little bit in. Um, how much? If you've got a little stock cube, probably about a quarter to a half, depending on the quantity you're making up here, just to stir that in, just to thicken that off. Nice, nice, that's coming together really nicely already. Now, at this point, I want to raise the temperature, okay? So you need to raise the temperature right up to the top for a moment. We're going to bring it all to the boil. So uh, we, at the moment, we might have it simmering. So simmering is like lemonade, okay? So simmering is like there's tiny little bubbles you might have around the outside when you're doing lemonade. What I want you to do now is we're going to bring that right up to a boil. Um, be careful it doesn't spit to you. If it does, just pull away from it to reduce the heat. Um, we're going to bring it right up to a boil. And then we're going to go back down to a simmer again. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to bring this one right up to the boil now. Turn that up to the maximum heat. You won't be able to hear that now. It's blasting away now. It is now starting to go from lemonade simmering to bubble bath boiling. And that's where we want to be now. But just be careful it doesn't spit or splash on you, okay? So just be careful there. Just keep it stirring all the way around. Bring it up to a boil. There we go. That is now brought right up to a boil. Fabulous, wonderful, it's doing really well here. There we go. The banana is also starting to soften there. We've got the soft fruits, so all the mandarin is softening up, and all of those juices are coming out, and as they do so, they're concentrating and mixing to make perfect curry for you there. Okay, that is wonderful. I'm going to turn that right down now, and we're going to go back to... Well, let's turn it, right, turn it right down for us. The lowest simmer now, and I'm going to uh, go back to the bread making now. Okay. Um, now, let's come back to the. We'll talk about different sorts of breads. Um, I'm going to be making our different breads. So I'll turn it down to a simmer. Just think about um, energy consumption here. What you can do at this point is you can put a large, while it's simmering away, you can put yourself a large lid over the top. You've got a large pan. Or if you want to, 
And you can put some tin foil or katush. katush. We've got a little tin foil just over the top. You can do that. So if you've got a lid, you're doing it in a pan, you can do it. If you've got a spry pan with a lid, you can do that. Or if you want to, just a bit of tin foil around that one. Be careful with not to burn yourself. Just do, just do that one. I'm on the lowest heat possible. I'm just going to be, you can do either a lid or a bit of tin foil on there. And um, we're just going to um, simmer that one off nicely. So we are now at, well, in fact, we've done pretty much all of this one now. Um, we are going to be, we've come down to, we're now at number nine on our board. So let me, there we go. Number nine on the board. We're now simmering that one off nicely. We'll just keep going back to check on it, but we are just simmering that one off nicely. Okay. Um, now it's time for the breads. So let's get on with our flatbreads. While that's doing, we're going to do, do our flatbreads. So how do we make our little flatbreads? Well, let me put up the recipe on the board here for you. Just going to go onto the board and we'll change that one. Forward to our flatbreads. Now the flatbreads are really, really easy to make. And they're a lovely one to do while this is simmering off nicely, okay? So they're really lovely and easy to do. Um, you can make these ones really work really well and real, real quick, okay? All we're gonna need for this is our flour. So we're gonna be using um, 200 grams of flour. So let me get my bowl here. I'm gonna be putting in there 200 grams of the flour. Now you can say, use self-raising flour for this one. If you haven't got self-raising flour, um, that's fine. So you can use um, you can just use a plain flour. So I've got, you've got some plain flour here if you want to use plain flour, and then just add a little bit more baking powder into this one. So whereas we're um, adding one teaspoon of baking powder, double that if you're using plain flour because the self-raising flour has already got baking powder in it. But we're going to add to it. But if you haven't got um, self-raising flour, use plain flour. A little bit more baking powder in there. If you haven't got baking powder, bicarbonate soda will do because we've got. Um, but bicarbonate soda is basically a dry alkali, and the milk or uh, dairy, uh, or even dairy alternative, the yogurt, has got a slight acidity to it, so that will still work. But baking powder will work better. Um, and if you are obviously, if you're gluten free, you can use um, some gluten free flour if you want to with this one, that will still work. If you're doing that, I'd add a little bit of xanthan gum in there um, if you can, just to give it some more protein. All right, so what are we gonna be using? I'm using my self-raising flour. Here is my self-raising flour. I'm gonna be measuring out 200 grams of self-raising flour. So um, onto a scale, 200 grams of self-raising flour. Here we go. Um, what does 200 grams look like? Well, let me just get that one. 200 grams is, in fact, we'll do it with spoons. We'll do it with spoons. So if for whatever reason you haven't got scales at home, um, can I use half? How much ginger? Yeah, 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 you can. Yep, yeah, so that one. Um, you can make half of this if you want to. So um, 200 grams. So if you haven't got 200 grams, you could use half of that. Use 100 grams. One, two, three, four tablespoons is 100 grams. We weren't going to do um, 200 grams, so we'll go five, six, seven, eight. Perfect, 199 grams. Uh, okay, so you can do it in tablespoons if you haven't got scales, that will work fine. Here is my flour in my bowl. You can see that flour in the bowl there. Um, now what I'm gonna do to this is gonna add in a teaspoon of the salt and a teaspoon of baking powder. So um, here is my uh, baking powder. Oops, there we go, baking powder is there. I'm gonna be putting in a teaspoon, that's the small one. There we go, some small taste, teaspoon of baking powder. In that goes. And if you've got plain flour, put in two of those. In with that, I'm also gonna put in um, some salt. Again, about a teaspoon of salt. Just gonna give that one. Okay. Flour, salt, baking powder in my bowl. Now, next thing we're gonna do is gonna put 200 grams of natural yogurt, or if you're going with dairy-free, a dairy-free alternative. Uh, this is a, a, an oat dairy-free alternative, for vegan yogurt. Going to be putting that in there now. You want to be putting in there um, 200 grams of that. And again, you can half this whole recipe if you want to. Just do 100 grams of the flour. That's fine by me. Um, I'm happy with that. Um, we're going to be putting in there. In I'll measure it with um, tablespoons for you, so you know as well. So 200 grams is my um, my oat-free. Um, oh, sorry, oat dairy replacement uh, in here, but that will work fine. So here we go. We're going to put one. 
two, three, four. That is 99. I'm happy with that. Uh, but we need to be 200 grams. So four, five, six, seven, eight. And there we have it. Um, we have got our, our 200 grams of yogurt in there with that. Now, I'm gonna, it, what's going to happen is, what's going on in here? We're going to talk about the food science here and a little bit of the food science as well. So what we've got in baking powder is a dry acid and a dry alkali. Now, dry acid and dry alkali react with one another. And when an acid and alkali react like that, they're going to produce something that's neutral. So it will produce a, a neutral salt. But in the process of producing that neutral salt, they're also going to be producing a gas. That gas is carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is going to help to lift our food or raise our food. And that is why bicarbon baking powder is called a raising agent, because it's going to raise the food. So what is the name of these, sorry, while I'm doing this one, I'm just stirring this one up. Um, what, are the, what are the names of the dry acid and dry alkali that are in baking powder? Well, the dry alkali is known as bicarbonate of soda. The dry acid is known as tartric, cream of tartar or tartaric acid, tartaric acid. Okay, so it's a dry acid. You can do use all, all sorts of acids. You can use a citric acid, which is an acid you can eat. Um, you can uh, you can think of other acids, food acids. We've got lemon juice, vinegar, all of these sort of things. But uh, also, like I say, dairy has got a little bit of uh, what we call lactic acid in there as well. Now, so acids and alkalis react, and they're going to make um, our food rise. This is how we use we use those to make a quick bread. So it happens quite quickly. Otherwise known as a soda bread because it's got bicarbonate of soda in it. Okay. Now I'm just stirring this one up and keeping stirring this one while I'm talking this to you in the bowl. And what's happening is that's coming together into a dough, a sticky bread dough. Oh, bit more food science for you for GCSE here. The sticky bread dough is sticky like, uh, oh, let me have a look. Sticky like, 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 like. Like, like, like. A glue stick, okay? And in fact, um, the glue stick um, in there is actually, the actual glue, the glue stick and glue, the gluey stuff that's in there, the sticky stuff that's in there, share the first bit of their beginning of their name. Glue and gluten you're making. Um, now you're making a gluten structure for the bubbles to go into, and that structure is going to be the bread structure, and that is a structure of gluten. So as I'm stirring this one with a liquid, the flour, it's got gliadin and gluten and two proteins in that, going to combine to make gluten, a sticky um, sticky protein. That protein, oh, we're going to throw loads of uh, GCSE in here, and um, that protein, that gluten, is both stretchy, so what we call uh, elastic, like a balloon, and it's plastic, which means it's moldable, like this slimy, sticky slime. Okay, um, and you can mold it into different shapes. So gluten has got both those properties. It gets it from the pro pro two proteins that we are in the flour already, gliadin and glutenin, which combine to form that gluten. So we're gonna be uh, using raising agent, a chemical raising agent of acid and alkali combined, and that's going to make bubbles that are going to go into our stretchy elastic uh, gluten. It's a bit like bubble gum, so it will, it will expand when the gas is inside it, when you like when you blow carbon dioxide into it, and that's going to make our bread. Okay, that's now, I've been stirring that one for about 10 minutes, and we have now got our bread dough. I'm going to very quickly just check on my curry, so give it a good stir. So get back to your curries now. I'm just going to quickly get back to mine, give it a quick stir. Check the temperature. There we go. Let's just remove the tin for so that the smells are divine. They are great. Put the lid back on or tin for back on. And then you can get back to the bread. Okay, so I've just served mine. Um, right, uh, bread now. Let's do this bread. So I've now got this wonderful glutinous, I've got gluten in it, uh, bread dough that's quite sticky. Here's my dough ball there. Um, and it's got bubbles happening inside it. You can't see those bubbles right now, but you've got bubbles going on inside that because the acid and alkali is starting to get wet. They were dry before, they're now wet with the yogurt and they are starting to react with one another. You've probably had that reaction in your mouths before. 
you've probably done it before. Have anyone uh, ever eaten dib dabs, sherbet, those sort of things before? What are they? What's that sherbet? Well, sherbet, dry acid, dry alkali. In other words, it's baking powder. <laughs> baking powder. But um, but it's it's what it's got in there is dry acid and dry alkali, and when you put that in your mouth, it starts to fizzle and bubble in your mouth. So that is what's going on with our bread. Let's concentrate on the bread now. Let's zoom in on this bread now. Um, so this is my bread dough. Just zoom in again. Oops. Zoom in. There we go. So this is my bread dough. If you have a look on the board there, you can see that one on there. Um, now, what am I doing with this one? I'm just going to very neat, very roughly knead this together. So when I'm kneading, what I'm going to use is I'm using the um, I'm using the palm of my hand. Okay, so I'm using the palm of my hand, and I'm using the heel of the palm of my hand just down here, and I'm stretching into it and then folding it back, stretching into it and folding back. Now I'm not going to do this too much because, like I say, the the raising agents are always starting to bubble away in there in the same way that your uh, sherbet would do in your mouth. So we want to get this one onto the heat pretty soon. Okay, but I'm just going to make that into a nice ball. Okay, so now once I've made that into a nice ball, if you're following the recipe, we're on step number six. Once the, the, you tip the dough out on the floured surface, knead it for a few minutes. So what I'm doing now, I'm just going to knead and fold, press into it and fold it. I put a bit of flour on my work surface there. If yours gets sticky, put a little bit more flour onto it or onto the work surface. Here we go, just kneading that away, perfect. Right, you can start to see, you might be able to see the stretchy glutinous network in there of proteins, which we've got in there. Now, there's our bread. Now we need to make these into flat little naans. So what we're gonna do is gonna divide that into about six equals pieces. So um, with a sharp knife, I'm just gonna make this into six even space pieces. So bridge, and I'm going to do a claw, 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 okay. So I've got my pieces there. I'm going to roll the, each of these into little balls. There we go. Just going to roll each of those into a little ball. And roll each of these into little balls. There we go. And the same with the other two. I'm just going to roll those ones each into balls. So we've got little balls of dough. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll those out with a rolling pin. Got a rolling pin there. Gonna roll each of those out into flat little pancakes, okay? So let's uh, get those. And we're gonna just roll one of these out into a flat pancake. Don't forget, if you're sticking a bit of flour onto your work surface, a little bit of flour onto the rolling pin there. And we're just gonna roll that one out into my first flat bread. There we go. There's my first one done. On it goes. You see that one? We're nearly coming to the end of the lesson. Don't worry. Curry is smelling beautiful. There we go. There is my first little flatbread, my pancake. Now, like I said, I'm going to get some greaseproof paper here. So I've got some, to turn myself off a piece of greaseproof paper. I'm going to put that one on top of the greaseproof paper. And then fold a piece of paper over the top of it and then, put, and then do another one. So here we go. Knead that one into a nice little ball. Right sort of shape. And again, you can use your fingers. If you haven't got a rolling pin at all, just use your fingers. Flatten it out like that if you want to. Um, how thin should it go? That is a good question. So we're looking at about a 20 pence piece, I suppose. 50 pence, 20 pence a piece, that sort of thickness, so quite thin. And again, if it starts to stick to your rolling pin, a bit of extra flour on your rolling pin. There we go. Now, you can flavor these as well. So we're out with that one. You can put some chopped up curry, some co fresh coriander in these, some parsley in this. In fact, you could even just put some dried ones in there. If I just sprinkle a little bit of parsley on there and just knead that one in, just sprinkle a little bit there. Could do. And we just knead that one in and cook it like that. There we go. You see the flakes, flakes in there in there. 
Now we're going to roll that one out. Roll it out in some way. Oh, you can see all the flex of the herbs there. And that's fine. And that's going to be nice. We can flavor these breads. You can put some uh, curry or some uh, chili oil on there and into them if you wanted to make them hot. You could flame them however you like. There we go. It's another one done. And so on. And you just keep doing these, rolling them out. And then we're going to take them over to our, uh, over to the, our stove, over to the hob. And we're going to cook them off. Right. Um, any questions for me here? Let's have a look. Back to me. So on the board there, you can see if you're following the recipes there on the board, um, we've rolled out the pieces of dough into small pieces, uh, stacked them up between pieces of kitchen roll or greaseproof paper there. Um, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to be putting them into a pan on a very high heat for a few minutes on both sides, just flip them like you would do a pancake. And once you've done that, your breads will be done. So you're just going to brown them on both sides and they'll start to puff up hopefully as well. So you'll get them really puffed up uh, flatbreads because the baking powder and the bicarbonate soda, which are uh, the, ba sorry, the bicarbonate soda and the cream of tartar uh, inside the baking powder, that dry out and dry alkali have been making gases and fizzing inside there. And those gases will expand when you put them uh, on the conducted heat of the pan. And as they do so, they should start to puff up as well. Don't worry if they don't completely puff up. So we're going to put those ones into a pan, cook them on both sides very quickly, flip them over, and they will look like our flat to go with our curries. Right, questions. Let's have a look at some questions. Um, uh, right, my dough is still really soggy. Okay, add a little bit more of the flour to that one. That will work fine. Let's have a look at some of the other questions. Um, what do you do when you have, when has put the flour and... Uh, baking powder, right, so uh, you need to try and, the flour and the baking powder doesn't go into the curry, it's making a separate bread here, so we're putting that into a bowl for the bread. <laughs> um, how thin again? So thin, thin. the bread should be about as thin as a 20 pence piece or a 50 pence piece, okay? Um, you can do them as thin as pound coin if you wanted to, um, but that depends on how you like them, but I like to go quite thin on these ones. Um, any other questions? No? Let's go over to the stove then, and we were going to finish off with our curry and our flatbread. Um, let's go back over to this one. And we'll zoom in so you can see what we're going to do. We'll zoom right in there. What are we kicking the bread in? A frying pan. So you can be kicking this the bread in a frying pan here. So I'm going to take my, some of my bread over. So a clean frying pan, you do not need to put any oil into the frying pan. So I'm just going to come over here. Now, I don't need to put any of any kind of oil into these frying pans. So if you've got another frying pan, um, that would work perfectly. It's going to have a my curry. Opportunity to go back to curry, give that a good stir through. Now, at this point, you can switch the curry off and put a lid on it and just let it simmer off nicely there and reduce down even more. So you can switch the curry off now. Give it a good stir through first and then switch off. I'm switching mine off now. That is smelling absolutely divine. There's enough heat, enough residual heat now in the pan just to keep that going. So switch it off now, you'll be fine. Um, I'm now going to get another uh, pan out. Um, use large or small, doesn't matter there. Um, we need to get, what we do need to do is make sure it's really, really hot. Okay, so I'm going to put this one on the hob. I'm going to switch on the heat. So I've got the heat on. I'm going to leave that pan just to get warm a minute. Um, how do you know if it's warm enough? That's a very good question. Um, what I'd like to do is if you want to get yourself um, a little bowl of water, got a bowl of water there, get your fingers into there and just flick a little bit of water into the center of the pan. Now, if the droplets of water start to sizzle and jump about on there, your pan is hot enough to uh, start with you putting your bread in. Okay, mine's not quite ready yet, still warming up. So I've got my curry over here on this side. So I'll show you that curry while we wait for that to do it. I'll show you what my curry should look, it looks like. That is the curry. Uh, I hope you can see that one just there. Oops, sorry, there we go. That's the beautiful curry. 
smells, oh, smells beautiful. Smells really, really lovely. Beautiful curry there. So curry's there. And then in with the curry, I'm going to be making some flatbreads. So here we go with the flatbreads. Let's see if that's hot enough now. So a bit of water. Here we go, a bit of water in there. Yeah, that's sizzling away nicely. So what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to put my flatbreads into the pan. Okay, I'm just going to move that round. Now remember, you're in charge of it. Don't let the pan be in charge. And it's just starting to puff up. It's just starting to puff up right now. That's good news. Um, if you look at how to do it, traditionally the flatbreads might be made. It'd be done on a really hot stone, or in fact, they even, you can see pictures on them online of where they put them directly on a flame. We're not going to do that because that's not very safe, but a very hot pan will do the same sort of thing. So mine is just like pop up. There we go. I'm just going to flip that one over. And flip that one over, and we're going to just uh, see if we can flip this one, shall we? Hey, there we go. So um, while I'm at the back of the kitchen here, a few more minutes. Both sides, just to brown those ones up. Okay, so we're just going to brown those ones off both sides, and then they'll be ready to go in with our curry. Okay, mine's just like again, puff up again. Yours might not be ready to puff up just yet. Just give it another few moments. And you can serve this up, and then you can dip your uh, breads into the curry. There should be enough curry there for at least two people. I would say probably three or four people, but at least two people. They have a big scoop of the curry, and you can dip your, your flat breads into it. We're nearly ready there. See if I can flip that one over again. Here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, not quite. Hey, there we go. For pancake day. Not long. And this dark skin starting to puff up again there. And the heat of it is just starting to brown it. It's another GCSE term we talk about dextrinization. So what we're doing is we're browning it by breaking down the complex sugars that are in flour into simpler sugars, uh, dextrins. And that breaking down is the browning of any kind of baked goods. It's what we call dextrinization there. So we've got a bit of dextrinization going on right now as those bread, the same as bread with any other kind of bread would brown or even cakes brown. They have obviously got sugar in as well, which is caramelizing. But the main part of the browning process there is going on is the dextrinization process. And again, when we talk about GCSE, GCSE is all of food preparation nutrition. It's fantastic. It tells you all about the chemistry behind why foods do what they do. So uh, if it's something you're thinking about in the future, it's more than just cooking. Right, that's brown nicely on one side. We're going to finish it off on the other side, and we are done. Now, that's coming to the end of our lesson, but we've got some really important things that need to be done next, okay? Um, you need to start thinking about cleaning up. <laughs> and although it uh, might seem an odd one, it's a very, very important one. So what do you need to do for that? Well, you need to start off by running some, in your sink, some hot soapy water, okay? So make sure you've got some hot soapy water going on in there, as much as you can into your bowl or into a sink with a plug hole in, as hot as you can make it so it's, uh, so it's safe. But hot soapy water going on there. Then what you need to do is you need to think about what you're going to wash up first. The first thing you're going to not wash up will be a sharp knife. So if you've been using a, a well, been using, using your sharp knives, okay, you need to make sure that's the first thing you wash up. You're going to be putting that in, in, to be washed up. You're not going to drop it into the, into the sauce, uh, into the um, washing up bowl or into the sink. You're going to keep hold of it and you're going to brush it. Use a brush to brush away, do not use a dishcloth because you might cut yourself. Then put it at the back of your draining area. So if you've got a draining area, you put it at the back of your draining area, not near the front where it can fall, and you let it dry. Don't be tempted to use a dishcloth to dry it off, okay? So that's the first thing. So your knife will be the first thing that you wash up. Then um, after the knife, let's just check with that one. Hey, beautiful. That's done. Um, the, after you've done the knife, washing up, then you can start working at all the other utensils, the small things to the larger things. So you can put that one on there um, and bring that one over here. So we've got lots going on there. Let me just show you what that looks like on the camera. So we've got, um, here we go, my flatbreads in there, beautiful flatbreads going on there. And you can see that one there, that's lovely. Um, so just gonna put that one over there to cool down for a minute. And so once you've, 
come back to me. Um, there we go. So um, once you've done that one, once you've uh, done your knives and you've washed that all up, then you need to concentrate on your work surface. Now your work surface is anything like mine, it'll have flour on it. Do not be tempted to wash the flour down yet. What you need to do is scrape all the flour off, as much as the flour off first before you clean down. Otherwise what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a sticky or glutinous uh, mess all over your worktop. So scrape down as much flour as you can off before you start to wash. Okay, before you start to wash your sides out. So really, really important. I don't want messages from parents saying, you've made a mess and you haven't cleaned up. You've got a bit of time now before break, if you're talking girls' grammar, before break now to clean up. You've got about another 10 minutes now to clean up before you um, before you start to, uh, to go for break. Okay, um, any questions before we start? Any questions before we start? No, uh, we've got one more question there. Um, what we, you know, that's it, we've answered that one. We're cooking the bread inside a pan. Um, no, it looks like everybody's happy. Is everybody happy? Let's have some thumbs up if you're happy there. So I know you've all got that and you're all happy to carry, up, carry on. I'm going to call it a day. I'd love to see any photos of any of your curries that you've made. If you're watching this at Talkie Girls Grammar School, don't forget you've got an assignment sheet. I'm going to put that in there, an evaluation of what you've done in lesson today. So uh, what went well, even better if what you've learned, uh, the photographs and everything to go into that from storyboarding, that will be for you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, fabulous. I'd love to know where you've been cooking today, uh, where you are in the country and what you've been doing as well. So that'd be great. Um, thank you, everyone, so much. Enjoy your curries today. Um, I say I hope you've had some fun doing that as well as learning lots with it. Um, stay safe, be good, and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much, everybody.